Okay, this one is on the uh, shaded pole motor. Uh, shaded mole, pole motors are the simplest of the electric motors out there. Uh, very little to go wrong with them. Uh, usually very small fractional horsepower things. Uh, this one's very small. Uh, there's not much to them. There's one winding, and that's this right here. Uh, this one, in this case, this one's actually two speed. You can see you got three terminals there. They've only got two of them hooked up. I'm not sure what how they got that set up, but anyway, this could actually be operated in two different speeds. Uh, what how you tell that these motors are shaded pole motors is you look for this little thing. Now that is a secondary winding. See that secondary winding uh, is off center to this this winding here. This winding provide, makes this into a magnet right here and right here and it induces this magnetism, the magnetic field induces power into this little copper bar, these two little bars here, and those copper bars comprise a winding that is effectively slightly out of phase. So what that means is, means this is an AC motor and it's an induction type motor, when power is applied here this motor will not turn without something being out of phase. We do some, we do these things to make motors out of phase to get them to start, because they would simply move back and forth like this, not quite that much, but they would, uh, as the AC cycles back and forth, it would start to move one way, then it would reverse and back and reverse and back like that. Well, when we put this in here, there's a little bit of power induced into it, and it puts it a little bit out of phase, it just kind of throws it a little ways. And once it throws it, it'll start. If you did not have this on here, this motor would not start. Uh, but if I flipped it like that, it would start. So it's a starting circuit for this very simple motor. Uh, about the only thing that fails on these things is the bearings. They're just cheapy little uh, uh, bronze bearings if you're lucky enough to get that. Uh, this one I think is a third horsepower or third, excuse me, a third of an amp. Uh, in a third horsepower, that's for sure. Uh, but very small, little fan uh, applications and the like. They press a little fan on the end of this thing and uh, it moves there. It draws about the same amount of power uh, running as it does locked rotor. If I lock this rotor up, it'll draw about the same amount of power. Now that's not true of a lot of PSC motors and the like, or uh, even the three-phase. Uh, if I have a locked rotor, they draw considerably more power. These things uh, draw the same amount of power pretty much with whatever load is on them. doesn't seem to make much difference. You put a heavy load on them, doesn't seem to do much other than slow them down. But when this thing gets started, it actually creates an inefficiency in the motor. After it starts, this interferes somewhat with the efficiency of the motor. Uh, they live with that because the motor is simple, the motor is cheap, and there's very little brake on it. So there's not much to them. They are induction motors, and I will pull this... Uh, rotor out of here and we'll take a look at it. But let's look at another one. Here's another one. It looks a little bit different. Uh, there's what looks like two windings, but it really isn't two windings because we've just got two wires going to it. That's a single winding on either side. Now if you look real freaking close, right in there, see that little break? That is the shaded pole of that motor. That's the same thing as this thing right here, but what they've done is instead of putting a copper bar in there, they just put a little tiny break in the uh, stator. 
by the way, stator is stationary, rotor is rotor. I mean, rotational. That's all that means. Uh, but if you can see that, you can probably see it a little better now. There's that little break in there. That is actually going to give this thing enough to start. And it'll start uh, rotating. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take one of these apart. We'll kind of look at inside. Not much to them. Okay, now we've got this thing tore apart. And if you look close at this rotor, it's your little bearing here and so on. The rotor is like any other AC motor. It's, it's an inducted motor, means the uh, magnetism here is induced into the rotor. And uh, it makes the rotor a magnet, which once this thing gets started, it just keeps turning. Uh, with no start components or anything, there's really not much of these motors. Uh, the bearings will go out. Obviously, you can't replace bearings on them. If you could, they'd probably cost more than a motor. Uh, the bearings are a bronze bushing. Uh, and when they wear out, what usually happens is this rotor here will drag on the stator. So it'll drag inside this circle. Once it starts to drag in there, it's finished. There's nothing left. And that is the shaded pole motor. In some cases, uh, they have been replaced with PSC motors that use a capacitor to start them and are more efficient. But these small ones, I wouldn't be surprised to see these for quite a while. There are some uh, very small ECMs that have come out and that may take the place of some of these motors uh, as time goes on. But, you know, price is a driver in this motor. Uh, it does work. It is pretty long-lived. Uh, not real efficient, but it doesn't draw very much power in the first place. So pretty simple stuff. Uh, these are basic little shaded pole motors. Okay, last thing about these motors is this motor is actually reversible. Now if it came like this, then it would rotate one way. If I took and pulled this off like this, took this bearing and put it over here, and put the rotor in the opposite way, like that, the motor would go backwards. That's how you reverse these things. Big tough deal. Uh, but very simple motor.